In this video, I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to record any audio source on your computer into Ableton Live to use that as an audio sample within any of your projects. So in order to do this, we're going to need um, a tool downloadable for free from the internet. It used to be managed by Rogue Amoeba, but it's since been passed back off to its uh, original author, Matt Ingalls. And it's available if you go to Rogue Amoeba or just search for Soundflower, all one word, uh, Mac download, you'll be able to find this site, Rogue Amoeba, which has the link to the GitHub site. And then you can just read down below here, you can find out where the latest version uh, is available for download. Or if you want to get involved in the um, coding process, here's everything you need to do that. So once you've downloaded, you'll have to restart your computer. Um, but now Soundflower will show up as an audio device that you can either send audio to or receive audio from. So we're going to use that as the intermediary between our computer or our operating system's audio output and the input to Ableton Live. So to do that, let's go first check out our system preferences by going up to the Apple in the menu bar, down to System Preferences, and then to the Sound tab. And then when we look at the output and the input, and this is where it is our operating system output its audio to and where does it receive audio from. So in this case we only want to change the output settings and we want to have our output rather than going to either our headphones or our built-in output we want to send the output of our computer to Soundflower 2 channel. So currently we're not going to be able to hear any of our computer's audio because it's being sent to this intermediary and it's not being there's nothing set yet to listen to that uh, location. So there's a couple bugs that could come up when we make this switch um, that I've discovered. And that is, if I'm still at headphones and I turn the volume all the way down on my computer, then I switch to Soundflower 2 channel. If we look at the volume indicator, both here in System Preferences as well as up in the menu bar, it appears to be all the way up. But then when I go to record, it's still going to remember that previous setting of the volume being all the way down, and we're actually not going to hear anything. So before I make that switch from built-in output or headphones, I want to make sure that I bring my volume all the way up, and then switch to Soundflower 2 channel. Now the shortcut for doing all of this that's really handy to keep in mind is if I hold down the Option or the Alt key on my computer's keyboard and go up to the menu bar, the speaker icon in the menu bar there, holding down that Option key and click, it gives me a shortcut into that same menu that we can see over here in System Preferences. Because throughout this process, we're going to be doing a lot of switching back and forth between Soundflower and the headphones as the output for our computer. So now that we've got our computer outputting to Soundflower 2 channel, we need to go into Ableton and set that to listen to whatever is being routed to Soundflower 2 channel. So we're going to go into Live's Preferences, the Audio tab, and in this first section here, we're going to set or make sure that the uh, input device for Ableton is set to Soundflower 2 channel. So now we've got it set so that our computer's operating system is outputting whatever it hears to Soundflower, and Ableton is set to listen to Soundflower, and then pump its output out to our built-in output. In this case, it's going to be my headphones. So one thing that we want to keep in mind is that when before we made that switch from built-in output to Soundflower 2 channel, we turned the volume all the way up on our computer's audio. So that means as soon as we have audio passing through from some sort, source through Ableton. Um, unless I bring down um, the volume at some point within Ableton, that's going to hit my ears at full volume, which could be pretty disastrous um, or damaging to my ears. So before I turn anything on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the master output in my uh, Ableton live set here, and I'm going to bring that all the way down. That way, once audio starts flowing, I'll come back here and I'll sneak that up until it reaches a comfortable volume for my ears or my system. I don't want to do any damage by accidentally having full volume flowing through this system. So now that we've got all that set up, we're ready to prepare our, our Ableton Live set to do some sampling from the internet. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to delete these MIDI tracks. We don't need those for the time being. I'm also going to delete one of those audio tracks, so I'm just down to one. I'm going to come over and I'm going to delete these return tracks. We're not using those. And then finally, I'm going to set up the input and the output options for this track. So we're going to be sampling a stereo audio feed from YouTube. So I want this track to listen to the external input, which is always whatever we've set up to be our input device within our preferences. And I'll listen to both 1 and 2, so channels 1 and 2, to get a stereo feed from that. If I wanted just a mono feed, say I was recording a, a guitar from my audio interface, then I might just select just the input channel that that guitar is plugged into. 
but in this case, stereo feed, so one and two. And then I'm gonna set my monitoring preferences, and these indicate how does, or when does the sound get passed from our source to our destination through this track. If I have it set to off, when I have it record enabled, we're not gonna be able to hear any of that signal flowing through the track. If I set it to auto, when this track is record enabled, we'll be able to hear the audio flowing through it, and when it's not record enabled, we won't hear the audio flowing through it. Red flag should jump up in your, in your mind, or in this case, an orange flag, um, if you ever click on the in for your monitoring preferences. And this indicates that even if the track is not record enabled, audio is still gonna be flowing from the source to the master. This is useful in performance situations um, if you don't wanna to have to record enable the track to be able to hear the audio flowing through it. But it is dangerous in that if I've got my microphones too close to my speakers, I could find myself in a, in a feedback situation. So I really wanna be careful when I use that setting. So most typically I like to use the auto setting. Um, that way I have to be conscious of every time I'm, I'm opening up that channel for audio to flow through. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go find something to sample. So let's jump over to Chrome. I've already got it open. Let's go to YouTube and let's do, let's see, does anything pop up here? Um, sure, let's do Adele Carpool Karaoke. So it's playing, um, audio is flowing through. We jump back over to Ableton. We can see here in our little input meter section that we're getting audio passing through and you're wondering why can't I hear anything and that's because we've got our monitoring preferences set to auto so all I've got to do is come down and record enable this. Now we can see that the signal is actually flowing from that source to its de destination but again you're still wondering hey why can't I hear it and remember that's because we brought down the master volume over here so I've got to bring that back up till it reaches a comfortable volume. Now we can hear Adele speaking there. So let's go over and let's pause this out so we don't have to deal with that for the time being. And now the final step here is to name the track before we record onto it. So if I just record anything into this track for now, so let's just start recording even though there's no sound flowing to it, you'll see that it starts generating audio clip. If I stop that recording process, we'll see that it's named that audio clip 1-audio. If I jump over to my current projects, samples recorded you can see it's generated a few files already one of these being just a temporary file that Ableton uses that'll disappear as soon as I record another clip um, but the thing that I want to point out is the name that Ableton has given these files it's just a random four digit number plus the name of that track and where this can get problematic is if I record um, or I do this a million times I have an, a new Ableton live set I record onto the first audio track, something. Um, by the end of the, all those sessions, I'm gonna have who knows how many thousands or millions of files on my computer that are called 001 space one dash audio. And this is gonna be really difficult when I come back 10 years from now to find that one great sample of Adele singing uh, karaoke in a carpool, um, that it's gonna be really hard for me to find it. So I wanna always try to name tracks, something that's gonna help me find it in the future um, before I record. So let's do Adele Carpool Care. There we go. So something like that. So now you'll see when I start recording, it starts giving that file a name that's at least in some way searchable in the future. So when I stop that, we can see over here we've got Adele Carpool Car. Um, so something legible. So now we can start prepping to record that. Let's go find a good moment in this. Oh, this is awful, but I think it's going to work. So let's sample from right around here. Get this playing. Jump over to Ableton. Hit record. Beautiful. So then we can jump over to stop that from playing back and now we've sampled something from youtube that i can go in and begin to edit begin to mess with and use within any of my projects so uh hopefully that video helps remember it's all about keeping track of signal flow um, making sure that you've got your preferences set up before you start recording both for your inputs and your outputs um, and 
most importantly of all is to bring down that master volume before you let any audio flow through. That way you avoid damaging your equipment or your ears. Anyways, have a good one.